What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Dr. D-Dev here, and oh my goodness, I'm excited for today's episode. So today, the entirety of today's episode is going to be spent at Cliffside Command, but I do have one sort of confession to get off my chest first. Um, I've, I've said that we're going to spend this episode finishing building Cliffside Command. Um, a little bit of a white lie, I told. Um, I've already gone ahead and done that. So today, we're going to be touring it. Um, this took me, uh, 30 to 40 hours off camera to do, <laughs> possibly more, I didn't keep track of it, but, oh my gosh, alright guys, um, we're gonna take a tour of the exterior first, at high graphical settings, and then from there, throughout the tour, we're gonna be adjusting our graphics, because <laughs> there are certain parts of the base that cannot handle... Uh, the graphics that we currently have. So we'll be going from pretty much max graphics to absolute, like, terrible graphics. Uh, it's not super noticeable, but as we're cutting between them, it probably will be noticeable. So keep that in mind. Uh, there might be some supports missing. For whatever reason, some supports keep disappearing. I keep getting them back, and then they go away again. But without further ado, hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. This is freaking cool. Let's do it. This is Cliffside Command. We have made it all the way down the cliffside, hence Cliffside Command. We've got our three prawn suit bays down at the bottom. I'm not going to tell you all what's inside. I'm just going to kind of let you guys admire the exterior. And oh my gosh, I'm sorry for the frame rate already. <laughs> it's already pretty rough. But you can't even see the whole base on any less graphics than this. So. We're going to deal with the choppy frame rate for a bit. These vertical tubes are purely decorational. I thought that looked kind of cool. We've got our our lovely, 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 lovely Cyclops up there. Uh, and then most of this hasn't changed, but some of it has drastically changed. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, the supports disappearing. If you just delete the window and put it back, they reappear. But we have expanded this garden area quite a bit. Uh, I really like the design and how it all came out. I think it looks pretty sweet. I love it! Ooh, it's just so cool looking. And the frames... So rough. Anyway, so this is our exterior garden. We have one of every single uh, underwater plant planted here. With the exception of the tiger plant, because screw those guys. Um, I placed them right here originally, where these eye stalks are, and as they shot at me, they poked holes in our base, and it kept flooding. So I got rid of them. I still have one inside, just in a chest, just to say I have one of every single plant in the game. But this inner ring is purely decorational, and then everything else, one bed is dedicated to, well, with the exception of this back row here, which is split between uh, the, uh, the blood... Blood vine and creep vine. Everything else has its own bed, and it just looks freaking sweet. All right, but that sort of does it for the exterior. I mean, it just it just looks so cool. There's so much awesome. All right, but let's head on inside, and uh, I've definitely experienced my fair share of glitches and or changes around the base. Animations are no longer a thing. You literally just go in or out, which looks kind of cool when approaching with this, because you, like, fly inside, <laughs> like we land right here. Kind of ridiculous, but kind of cool as well. Um, one thing that you'll note throughout the base is I have gone ahead and labeled probably more than I needed to, but I think it adds uh, a level of realism. Then again, speaking of realism, I built this totally not with the intention of it being for one person, so you'll see that throughout this base. Um, it very much feels like there could be a community living here. Not quite, but sort of. Um, so it's not all functional. Actually, very little of it is functional, but it's really cool. Uh, but we have a, a level system. So you'll see throughout the base, anytime we change uh, levels throughout a, a common area, so like a corridor or a hallway, uh, you'll see a, a level. So our original level that we built this is like part of our original base right here, at least this level, starting with this I compartment, um, is A1, the level up above us, so that kind of walkway right there is A2, 
and then the name or the numbering scheme going down is kind of in reverse. So we have B1 is the next level down, B2 is below that, all the way down to B5. Uh, but you can see we've we've got our exit and our biodomes. So let's start with the biodomes. I'm gonna try and walk, and hopefully the frame rate won't be too terrible because of it. Actually, we're about to get into some hairy stuff. Let's change the frame, or not the frame rate, the graphics real quick and uh, see how this looks. Okay, that should hopefully be better. So this room hasn't changed too much. You can see as we drop down here, you can see A1. As you enter through this hatch, you can see that you're on level A1. I tried to make it somewhat intuitive. I think it's kind of nice. Uh, I removed the, the name locker on these. I didn't realize you could even do that. And yes, yeah, this is our other entrance over here, A1. Not too much has changed here, except these grow beds are now filled with marble melons, which are really nice. Cut one, pick three per row, you eat them, and then you can replant that row. That's kind of what I've been doing for food. It's I kind of like it. It's nice. But let's go ahead and head up into our biodomes and take a look at this. So within each biodome, we have different plants. And so uh, between all four of them, uh, or technically all five of them, we have one of each ground plant or uh, land plant. So we've got our marble melon and our grub basket in here, as well as our bubble tree. We have bubble trees in every single room just to be used as fuel for our bioreactors. And you can see we've got a lot more power, uh, 7750. We will get to that here shortly, but this is, you can see A2 as we go up. And on each of these levels, we have a sort of recreational if you will. Um, they don't have anything to do with the biodomes, but it's used space, and I really like the idea. So if we head up here, actually, let's take a look at our sign first. So if we're coming down this hallway, we've got our exit and A1 access, which is the ladder down there. Um, melon dome, I named them by the uh, small plant in each room, so the melon dome, and the theater. So let's go check out the theater. So if we take a look at our theater, it's kind of nice. <laughs> A little kind of movie room to view a, a film with your friends. You can sit on the bench and watch the watch the TV. Any uh, picture frames that don't have a picture in them, I intended to be like a computer screen or a TV. So if you see that, it's not that I forgot to put something in it. It's that that's what I was going for. But anyway, this is our, our cinema or our theater. Nothing too fancy, but it kind of it gets the vibe across, right? And then if we head down... Again, you can see you're on level A2. I'm, I'm really happy with the labeling system in this space. It took me forever. And keep in mind, every single one of these signs takes two copper. Um, I completely depleted two, um, <laughs> two blood kelp forests of all copper. Um, and I still ran out. So just to give you guys an idea of what this base took. Um, next over here, we've got the voxel dome and our library. So again, we've got our Ming plants and our voxel shrubs. There's a lot of detail that went into this base, so I'm going to try to bring attention to some of it because it won't all be obvious uh, unless you know what you're looking for. But this is our library. Um, very, very sad selection here on the shelves, but it's nice. The Altera Public Library. You've got a little reading table. Um, this is another glitch I started encountering. The, some of the chairs and items started clipping into the floor, which is very strange, but... Yeah, that, that's a thing. We've got a little desk to read, some empty bookshelves. Please return books to front desk in the uh, the bin, or the, the book drop-off, which is actually a hazardous waste material bin. But regardless, kind of got a little front desk area here to... I don't know. Little, I definitely role-played a little bit when building this space. Anyway, that's that's our library. And that does it for... I got I to gotta try not to sprint. I'm trying to do this tour sprint-free. Um, and storage. I forgot about storage. I'm glad I have these labels. So if we go down, this is our storage room. Um, and it's taking a different take on storage than our other actual functional storage room. This is just some of everything. Um, not quite everything, but we've got all of our plant pots organized by type. Uh, the wall planters, some extra chargers, seating, just a little bit of everything. It's kind of messy, but that's kind of the goal. Uh, I wanted it to be a cluttered storage space. And I think it came out pretty nice. Okay, moving on. 
If we head across the bridge here, we enter our three-story tall... Uh, what's it called? Alien containment unit. And I've got all of the sort of starter fish in here. I originally put two of everything, and they breed. So I originally, or up until, you know, like a couple hours before this recording, I had nothing but peepers in here. And I was periodically using that as fuel for our bioreactors. And fish do so much more than plants do in bioreactors, by the way. I don't know if I've called attention to that, but they do. Um, I don't have any flora in here by choice. I didn't want any. I wanted this to be purely fish and nothing else. I think it came out nice, though. But if we head on out and across, we'll come back. Actually, no. Let's check out up here first. So, or down here. So you can access all four levels. Um, like I mentioned, it's only three levels tall, but this dome itself is four. Um, so let's go check out the top level. So this is level three. And on the top, we have sort of a, a lounge, and it's freaking cool, because it's on top of the alien containment unit. How cool would that be, to walk above a tank full of fish? I know some people have that in their homes, like wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people, um, and some aquariums have it, but I thought this would be pretty cool to have as like the top level of our base. We can look out over everything. I don't know. I think it's cool. I hope you guys agree. It's it's just fun. I'm gonna have a stupid smile throughout most of this video, by the way, uh, just because of how long this took and how happy I am with the end result. Anyway, moving on to finish our tour of A2, um, we have our chapel and the pink uh, pink cap dome is this way. So we have our pink caps and our Chinese potatoes in here. Um, also, some of these uh, rooms have storage on the walls with just extra stuff. Not all of them are used, but... Uh, and there will be some issues as we go throughout the base. Uh, there are so many things to this base that it's so easy to overlook the smallest of things. But this is our chapel. Which I think is pretty cool. The Church of Aurora. To adapt is to survive. You can give your sermons from behind the counter. No podium, so this had to make do. But I think this looks pretty good. For whatever reason, these benches can't be placed anywhere in the room. Like, it wasn't letting me place them in, you know, like, at a less steep angle right here for whatever reason. But anyway, I think it came out pretty nice. And on to one of my favorite rooms in the base. Not quite the favorite. It's up there, though. I'm actually not sure if I even have a favorite. But this is a fern palm. Uh, and forgive me if I cover things that you've seen in a previous episode. I spent so much time off camera. I don't remember what I most recently covered in an episode or what I've done off camera. Um, but these fern palms, I'm 100% sure we did not have with us. Uh, this was actually in... Uh, which direction is it from here? Um, the second island we found where we found all these plants. They were in uh, the observatory up at the top in one of the uh, shelters. I had to go back and I was exploring that island to make sure I didn't miss anything and I found these so cool um, that's this room and up top is our cafe which this took me probably an hour to do so just keep that in mind it's not gonna look like it but it, it did so this is our cafe or like a coffee shop but coffee shop wouldn't fit on the sign so this, we've got some seating, some plants, some decor, trash can, and our coffee. And let's take a look at the menu. Welcome to Cafe Espresso. We can read some customer reviews. 10 out of 10 perfection. So damn good. I can't get enough out of this world. Best coffee around, and it's to die for. Welcome to Cafe Espresso. World's best and only cup of coffee. This line right here probably took me about... 10 minutes to line up since that's technically two signs <laughs> just just to let you in kind of behind the scenes today's menu which doesn't ever change we've got some drinks we've got the ghost weed drip the cara cappuccino and the reaper and you can get them in three different sizes little peeper average cup of joe 
and Leviathan. So you can get a Leviathan the Reaper, which I think is kind of funny. Or a Lil Peeper Ghostweed Drip. Or any combination. And then we've got our, our coffee on tap here. I know that's not the term for it, but uh, we've got our Ghostweed Drip, our Cara Cappuccino, and the Reaper ready to be served to our customers that do not exist. And I was thinking about how I would love to decorate this counter, put like a cash register, and then this would be where you get your drink and where you put all your like mix, uh, your fixings in your coffee, your sugar, your cream, your half and half, or whatever equivalent, your acid mushroom flakes or whatever for Subnautica. But yeah, this is the cafe. I think it came out pretty, pretty sweet. This was so much fun to do and I had a blast with it. I hope you guys like it. All right, so that does it. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. That does it for our biodomes. So if we head back and follow our exit signs and make our way over towards A1, back down here, you know, we've got our our access hatch to our exterior garden, which we've already showed. And with this graphics graphical setting, you can see the render distance drops significantly. Like, those disappear as we get further away. So, we're doing what we can to make this work. This base is so massive that the game does not like running anymore. I can play anywhere else in the game. Max, max, max graphics, no issues whatsoever, just like I've done this entire playthrough. But yeah, this is, it's just so cool. But this is kind of the, the only area of our base, well, one of the areas of our base that has sort of stayed the same. Uh, obviously, it's drastically changed, but everywhere else is pretty, pretty different. Um, well, we'll get there. So this is storage and B1 access. None of this has changed. Uh, you guys know this storage. This has been used quite heavily in the process of building this base. Uh, very extensively. I did add some planters here. You'll see a lot more decor throughout the entire facility. Uh, like, I don't believe these were here. Uh, they might have been, but I had some more uh, over in that access hallway as well. But if we head down to our Seamoth Bay, B1, which is the next level down, and our Captain's Quarters, you can see we've got our Seamoth Bay right in front of us with our new Seamoth, which we will, we will take a look at the name. Fabulous Fourth. <laughs> so everything else is the something, the Avenger, the Bruiser, the, the whatever. I wanted to make this the Fabulous Fourth, but it wouldn't fit. Um, so we've lost Korra, Korra 2.0, and Seamoth. So this is our fourth Seamoth. Um, so I decided to name it Fabulous Fourth and make it Hot Pink. Because that's just fabulous. I love it. <laughs> we also added some decor around the ceilings and all of our uh, moon pools, which I think really brings the room to life. Uh, it adds a lot more going on, which, I don't know, looks really nice. Uh, storage hasn't changed in here. Nothing's changed except that and our Seamoth. Um, and just to show you guys, all of our vehicles are upgraded to the max with what I would actually use them for. Um, so our our Seamoth, now that we have such upgraded everything else, it's just kind of our leisure vehicle. Um, so we've got our, our solar charger so we can go out and take as long of a trip as we want. We can just sit there and charge and never run out of juice. Storage, in case we find anything along the way that we want. Hull reinforcement, because this is still 4546B. Things are out to get you. Uh, and then, obviously, the max depth module, so we can do some exploring. Um, that's it for the Seamoth, though. Uh, we also, you can see it right there. It's green. Uh, we have an ion power cell in all of our vehicles. Jeez, yeah, and no ladder animations either. We just pop up on the top. Um, in here, in our garage slash workshop, nothing's changed on this side, but I did go ahead and add some more uh, power cell chargers and remove the lab equipment that was here. Uh, we relocated it somewhere else because we just didn't have the room for it here, and I needed more power cell chargers with how many vehicles I have that are now using power cells um, and battery chargers just to kind of balance it out. It looks, I think it looks nice. Um, and this is still where we do all of our our stuff, we don't have a lot of anything prepped anymore because we kind of used all of it to make this base. But yeah, very, very resource intensive project this was. Uh, this is our, excuse me, our Cyclops bridge. 
which if we head over here, we can easily access, if I don't do it improperly, our Cyclops. Welcome up. To give you an idea of how resource intensive this project was, uh, I went ahead and re-added all of these. And just keep it in mind as we continue touring, um, we've already seen this, I won't be showing you much of the Cyclops. Um, keep in mind any, any locker without a label at one point contained titanium to the brim. Every single one of those was full with titanium. Uh, we had quartz, all of these were full at one point. Um, all of these, again, titanium. <laughs> They're all empty now because most of it's gone into the base. And then all of these, these five were filled with copper wire. I made the copper on the Cyclops or into copper wire, put it in here, filled those, and that wasn't enough for our labeling. On the upper level, none of this has changed. You guys remember this from our last episode, hopefully. If not, go check it out again. Um, artwork hasn't changed at all. But in here, again, keep in mind, all of these <laughs> were titanium, with the exception of this one, which is still our extra decoys, as the label suggests. But yeah, that's it for in here. Oh, also, one thing, exciting thing. Uh, while I was out exploring uh, the... Where was it? One of the blood kelp forests where one of our beacons was at? Um, the Captain Yasuo... No, it's not Yasuo. Captain CTOU's life pod, that one. Um, I found this. The Cyclops Death Depth Module Mark 1. It was literally sitting right outside. Somehow I missed it completely, but I'm glad I found it because now I could upgrade it to Mark 3. And now we can go 1,700 meters deep in this thing, which is so much better than the measly 500 that we had before. But that does it for the Avenger, or our Cyclops. But if you dock this well, you literally exit and you go right back down and you know what level you're on upon accessing it, B1, <laughs> around the corner and we're back into our Seamoth Bay. But if we check out our captain's quarters, again, as you come down here and you're wondering what level you're on you're on b1 i'll stop harping on that i promise um <laughs> i just want to get that into your minds that it's it's everywhere uh we'll head down to our captain's quarters which we've done a little little decorating in the hall some chairs some some stuff and we've got a door which again no animations for these anymore it just teleports you to like where you would be to access it so you can eternally walk backwards and spam opening and closing doors it's kind of trippy Anyway, if we head on in here, nothing's changed in here. Absolutely nothing. Uh, at least, I don't believe so. But if we head down into our room, we've acquired a couple new new toys. And quite literally, we got another hat, which is cool. And we found this. It's a Markiplier doll. Like, why is this in the game? It's so funny and so bizarre. Uh, that was in a random life pod I found. We didn't have a beacon for it, actually. It was life pod seven in, I think that's called the crag fields, where all the kind of like spiky land is sticking up at angles. Uh, we had this arcade gorge toy. We found a toy car. Also, I think in the same place as we found the unusual doll, which is the Markiplier no! bobblehead. <laughs> uh, and another cap, more caps. So we finally got to fill out these shelves, which I'm really happy about. Um, and I think we added a new fish in here, maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, this is all the same. We've got our malfunctioning computer screen, a reminder to stay calm, and again, our, our personal lab setup. Intelligence is the ability to adapt and change. Again, a similar, I didn't even realize I had this quote in here when I chose the quote for the church, which is, um, adapting is to survive or something like that uh, or to adapt is to survive apparently adaptation is the key of this base or the theme alright so that does it for the captain's quarters with our personal observation deck out there which I don't feel like you guys need to see that but anyway we will continue with the tour oh man this is going to take a little while I'm excited though we replaced these two with um the L compartments with windows because I think that's a really cool look just kind of have a window on one side and then the other 
just really makes it flow. Over here, we have a little... You can take a pit stop and grab a cup of joe if you want, which I might actually do because uh, we're going to need to take breaks to eat and drink throughout this. But luckily, we have stations set up for that, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, if we head into our scanner room, nothing's different here. We added a little quote, to explore is to grow. And we've got our window so we can overlook the rest of our base. You can see we can't even see our uh, moon pools down there anymore. They're like partially constructed. But yes, we can we can do a lot of stuff with this. I won't bother because, yeah, no need. But anyway, that's our scanner room. It was a huge asset to us throughout all of this. Finding and gathering resources. It's been amazing. All right, then we've got some lovely artwork, which you guys have all seen before. A little beach taken from the very first island we encountered. A little bit of plant work. B1. And this is welcome to the first of things that I forgot to do. Um, actually, I can, I can do it right now. We'll do it together, guys. Uh, so we're on B1 right now, so B2 would be down. And there we go. B2 is now this way. <laughs> there we go. We head down to B2, where we have our fauna tanks. So let's check those out. We added some decor on the walls as well. This tank I have not changed, and also say goodbye to our frame rate, and welcome to the slideshow. Um, I haven't changed this tank. I wanted to leave it with just the sand sharks. Purely because of what I did our intro um, with, or what I said in the intro of our Leviathan killing video, last one. Um, it's a great place to like pump yourself up to go fight something. Why is the frame rate better in here than, oh just kidding, no it's not. Uh, to get like pumped up and just, you know, swim with the sharks before you have to go do something intense. Anyway, that's in here. Our other one? is a combination of various eggs that we found that contain predators. Um, and I went ahead and infected them, because screw those guys. So they know they now all have the Cara virus, or bacterium, or whatever it is, the Cara infection. Um, again, because I've, I've had enough with these guys. So especially this dude. Screw you. Anyway, that's kind of what this is, just a, a screw you tank. <laughs> Uh, and then we do have a lower level down there, which I modified ever so slightly just by adding a window here. Nothing too crazy, but yes, that that's new. I'm going to avoid showing you guys that nitty gritty of details, but all right, let's move on. So if we want to access B3, we turn around, go behind us and head down to B3. You can see if we're headed back up. We've got labeling there. Welcome to B3. On B3, we have a couple items of interest. The gallery, the observatory, and the mess hall, as well as access to B4. So, this area right here, as soon as we start, is our gallery. I realize this is a repeat picture, but I like it, so I'm keeping it. This is our gallery. It's intentionally slightly bland in this hallway. Uh, I didn't add any plants here, because I wanted your turn of the corner to really just kind of spark your visual interest. So I went around and took some photos of things that were kind of cool and looked awesome. So that is our, uh, that's actually right next to Ghost Recon, that skeleton uh, in the Lost River. We'll check out all of the gallery real quick, uh, and then we'll come back for the observatory. This lovely scenic photo, it's, it's just beautiful. I love it. That was taken from the island that we found all the plants on, which is all this stuff. And I tried to make the uh, plants kind of match the photo a little bit. That's all green because it's in the Lost River. This adds a little pop of color. Again, all green. I thought this picture was pretty friggin' sweet. It took me a while to get because of because of timing. But that is in the primary alien containment facility as the new ion cubes are being synthesized. And I crashed our prawn suit down, ran away, and snapped a photo. And that's what that ends up looking like. It's pretty cool with all the dust. I'm really proud of that one. Uh, and then another really just kind of scenic photo uh, on that same island. And it takes a little bit for our photos to render in there. All right, so if we backtrack a little bit, we can head up to our observatory, which is up this ladder. And this is our three-way observatory. I didn't feel the need to have one back here because 
That's just more of our base. I didn't feel the need to see any of that. But look at our base from this view, guys. Like, holy crap. And yes, we do have some spotlights installed on the tops of these. I don't know if I can get an angle where you can see it. There you go. It's scanning around right now. It looks, I don't know, it looks really cool. I love the spotlights in this game. They add um, a dynamic element to your base. Everything else is stationary, but these spotlights just constantly roam around and it, it looks awesome. But yeah, we have three of these. They are identical, each with a spotlight facing out and a swivel chair. And that's it for up here. So if we head down, we can head to our mess mess hall and then on to B4. Not before we go to B4, let's go to the mess hall. Welcome to the mess hall. <laughs> it's got seating for 12, food and water, which I don't think I've ever even removed anything from this, but heck, we need water, so why not, right? That works. Vital and we're full on water. Stabilizing. And we can grab some food while we're here. This works perfectly. I love it. So this room doesn't actually see that much use. But obviously right now it's serving quite the function. We also have a trash can and that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a place to gather and eat uh, chips out of a vending machine. Yeah. Anyway, if we continue on this way, we can head back to the gallery, the observatory, or B2, but we want to move on to B4. We can look at these little, I don't know, I keep calling them porthole windows, or at least in my mind I do. I don't think I've ever used that terminology, but I don't know. I like how you can like get in them and like stand on the glass since they're dome-shaped, and you can just kind of get a full no-wall view at all, like you're not seeing any of this crap, and it just looks awesome. All right, so if we head down to B4, where we have our medical ward and nuclear reactors. Let's check that out. So this is an emergency access hatch. Um, I use it a ton for going between uh, the upper level and down here, instead of having to go all the way around through all that. You can just grab this and zoom on up and fly up to here. And you're back in the base, and then you can dive back in Swim down, and you're right back where we just were. Which is kind of cool. So it's not really emergency exit. I use it as an exit all the time. But let's head to our nuclear reactors and our medical ward, which I realize are kind of ironically to have placed near each other. Actually, you can't get to the medical ward without going through the nuclear reactors, which probably guarantees work for the doctors, right? Um, so in, oh yeah, we haven't ever shown one of these before. This is a nuclear reactor. This is what they look like, and I love how they sound. They just kind of like pulsate, but they generate so much power and they do it so fast, it's crazy. Uh, we're draining a lot of power with all the lights on this base. Um, this actually isn't even keeping up right now. So we will activate our second one here in just a sec, but this is a lovely fish tank with infected fish because the nuclear radiation totally got to them. I definitely role played the heck out of this base, by the way. Um, in here, we've got some extra reactors, and then over here, we've got all the resources to make them, or at least the specific resource, the uraninite, which is a lot, and then everything else is just pretty decoration. If we head down here, we have another bioreactor, which we'll go ahead and activate here real quick, just to show how that works. Not that it's that difficult, but that sound is so satisfying, but look at our power now. It's like skyrocketing. We're obviously using a ton still, but uh, this fabricator is here just simply to make those rods uh, because they are kind of resource intensive. Three uraninite, lead, um, titanium, and glass. But anyway, if we head through here, I would have loved to have a, just in case any of you are wondering why there's not a door here, uh, it doesn't work here. I wanted a door here. I actually built this fully with a door in mind and now it doesn't have one so that's kind of sad but if we enter here this is the doctor's office please take a seat the doctor will be with you shortly lucky you guys the doctor is already with you guys but anyway uh, we've got two TV monitors on either side some seating for those that are waiting to see the doctor our receptionist can sit here but not really because there's not enough space to sit um, you know you got to have a fish tank in a waiting room right 
and then some plants. I like it. Um, and this is the first time we've actually done a ladder in the middle of a room, which I actually really like. I thought it would be very much in the way, but it actually frees up so much more room for activities. It's kind of cool. But if we head down here, this is the actual exam room. Uh, it's one open room with three three beds for patient number one, two, and three, as well as their medical records, or at least that's what I'm going to say they look like. I've got the different tablet things that I screenshotted and used as photos. Uh, we're having some technology issues or technological issues with uh, patient number two's monitor here, which is why it looks so messed up. Um, and then patient number three has the purple tablet thing if we'll ever, if it will ever load and then another markiplier bobble bobblehead because why not it, it's cool little waiting area for friends and family to sit at while they uh visit their guests obviously we need some some sort of disposal for medical waste as well as one for general waste just kidding i had to get rid of that and then a modification station because i don't know nothing looks more medically fitting than all those little arm things <laughs> and then over here for those patients that are a little bit stressed out and need to calm down we have our tranquility deck and this is for a medical staff to supervise um, that seat is just for them so they can supervise who goes in and out uh, this is our tranquility deck it's just got a couple planters that have um, marble melon in them they have a lot of marble melon inside uh, that will be here shortly. <laughs> and just some greenery, some benches to sit, and I don't know. It's peaceful. You can look out at your surroundings at the nearby kelp forest and just kind of relax. It's nice and tranquil. That's the goal, right? Also, I'm not sure what's causing this, like, stripe. Must be a lighting glitch or something. Anyway, that's it for the tranquility deck as well as our entire medical, medical ward. So let's head on out. We can exit this way. Come back to see us soon. Will do, thank you. <laughs> All right, so if we head up here, we're back on B4, where we have our emergency exit. And if we head to the right here, which again, forgot to label. There's so much stuff to label. It's so easy to miss stuff. Um, this is just nothing but windows. I love these ceiling windows. I didn't do a ton of them, but where I did, I think they look awesome. Um, like nothing looks cooler than just going backwards and looking up and seeing, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Are those? No, those are just lights. Anyway, so if we head down to B5, our final level, we have the laboratory, the prawn bays, and the vault. So let's check out the vault first. We're going to just kind of go in a circle here. So to our right is the vault. So if we go through these doors, this was so much more epic when you actually had to open them and it took like 10 seconds to open each door. But if you go through these with the reinforced walls, we enter the vault. Get out of here, boomerang fish. Quit, quit ruining this. This is the vault. It's got armored walls all the way around. We've got a couple uh, safety, safety deposit boxes here on the wall with people storing their, their personal valuables. I don't know. Again, role playing a little bit here. We got some gold, silver, diamonds, you name it. In here, we'll check that out last, but all back here is the storage of our valuables. So these three lockers are filled almost to the brim. I had to use some of this to actually finish the base with silver, which is a lot of silver. These three on the right, our gold I'm just showing you how much how many resources I've acquired it's kind of ridiculous in the middle we've got our diamonds which is a ton of diamonds and then alternating on these five inner ones we have our rubies and our kyanite and it just keeps altering we have so much of this stuff it is unreal the kyanite's actually really hard to get because you have a very small chance of acquiring it when you mine it but the rubies, we just have so many. And then this is our, like, I don't know. If you've ever watched any heist movie where they rob a bank, you got to have a, a bag filled with valuables, right? So that's what that is. I think it looks really cool, creating that half circle and putting the table and the bag on top. I don't know. 
it's cool. And then we've got a spot for a security guard right here, which I think is cool. And of course, just to keep it immersive, we got to close all the doors behind us on our way out. So that is the vault. If we go behind us here, we've got the laboratory. This is probably one of my favorite rooms. Uh, authorized personnel only. So let's go ahead and head on in. On the left here, we've got a radio for emergencies only. Uh, a first aid kit, as well as a locker, but... Ooh, rad suit and locker. Radiation suit required beyond this point. So let's go ahead and don our radiation suit. Real quick, because we got to abide by the, the rules, right? Radiation helmet, there we go. All right, so now we can head on in. So this is our lab. I think it came out really nice. We got some, you know, flasks up top. Uh, the cylindrical one, which I don't know if we found on camera or off, but we found one of those. And we've got all of our, you know, lab stations set up. You can have up to four people working in this lab at any given time. One person on this corner set up, another here, another one over here, and then your fourth over here. Again, with the modification station, just because it seems to fit. It's really cool. And then we've got some storage for random stuff. Our tablets, our, you know, uh, advanced materials are that's what they're technically called, as well as all of our ion cubes. Because this is sort of our alien research facility, sort of. And hidden amongst the trees is a hidden ladder that no one knows about except for the authorized personnel that are supposed to be in this room. We can go up here. And around the perimeter of the room, we have surveillance cameras throughout the facility that are keeping an eye on our surroundings at all times, just to make sure that no shenanigans happen. I, th I had kind of fun, or I had some fun taking those, just positioning myself on the base to take these. It's kind of cool. And then in the middle, we have our, our mysterious, our fun, our cuddly alien friends, our cuttlefish. I thought these would reproduce, so I put two in here, and they didn't. So I added a third, and they still didn't, so then I just added a random mesmer, because these things are really cool, and I like them. And they look, they look awesome. So, anyway, that's here. We've got some of the more alien-looking flora, in my opinion. And this is our, our kind of top-secret research area. We're doing some experiments on the, on the cuddly nature of the cuttlefish, and how we can make all of the fauna on the planet a little bit more docile. Anyway, that's that's the role plan going on. Uh, so we don't head back out this way, but we will close the door behind us because because role play. Uh, if we head on through, this lab is meant to have a one-way entrance and a one-way exit. Um, and yes, Project Xenopod was what I kind of named this whole experiment uh, that's going on. We can dispose of our hazardous material here. Uh, what else did I miss as far as labels go? We've got our spill cleanup kit on the wall right here. Which I totally know it's a fabricator. And then if we head in here, and again, I would have loved to have a door here as well. We've got our decontamination chamber. Please stand still. Approximate detox time is 15 seconds. This, again, took me probably 5 to 10 minutes to get up on the wall. Just because of the positioning and sizing and trying to center two signs with each other on the same row. It's a little difficult. Anyway, that seems like about 15 seconds. We can empty any of our um, toxic materials in here, and we can exit right here. And what's the sign? Please return rad suits here. Okay, I can do that. So we put on our other suit and throw our rad suit back in here. Oh, I'm adding it back. That's my bad. So now we should have two sets in here and two sets in the other one. Someone's got to be schlepping the suits back and forth, but that's not my job, so we're not going to bother. And then we have our exit only. So, with my head down, we will run back to where we just were, so we will explore from here. So, uh, without going through the laboratory, if we go to the left through the prawn bays, we can check out all of our different prawn suits, which are freaking cool. So in here, in prawn bay number one, we have the harvester. This prawn suit is equipped, and I've got a take them down to actually view the stuff they have. Yeah, and these supports were all going down to the ground when I started this recording, and now they're not. I, this game just cannot keep up with the amount of stuff I have here. Um, so we've got 
what do we have on this one? So we have dual storage as well as the depth module and the jump jet upgrade, which are pretty much uh, standard on all of our prawn suits, as well as a drill arm and a grappling arm to move around quicker. And of course, we are equipped with ion power cells. It's freaking cool. All of these are custom tailored to the function that they serve. So the harvester is obviously meant for resource gathering with the drill to acquire those resources and the extra storage uh, to handle or to store those resources. We also have a little a little poster right here, which is kind of cool, kind of blurry because of our settings right now, but kind of cool. And then out here, outside each prawn bay, we have a picture that was very, very carefully taken uh, of each prawn suit. So we've got a picture of the harvester doing harvester things out in the world, looking for resources with a freaking sweet silhouetted sort of uh, reef back in the background and a, a sand shark there at the bottom. It's kind of cool. I love it. And then we've got our little our plant beds, some trash can. And if this is where we exited from, uh, just to come full circle here, so we exit out the lab. We've got prawn bays two and three to our left, prawn bay one to the right, and then B4 access on our right as well. I went ahead and put one centralized modification station down here. I actually did use this quite a bit when upgrading all these. Uh, and without looking at that photo first, we will come in and we will check out the cruiser. So we've got the harvester and the cruiser, and you guys remember from last episode, the bruiser. I think it's a cool trio of names. We'll check this guy out real quick. So here in the cruiser, this guy is just meant all about exploration. You can tell just by what he's got right there, dual grappling arms, which I've got to tell you is freaking fun. Um, it doesn't serve too much of a use when just navigating the world normally, but I'll explain where it came into fun here in a sec. So again, standard, we've got the depth and the jump jet. We also have the engine efficiency so we can go explore for longer and hull reinforcement because things out there suck a lot. And again, the ion power cells, standard in all vehicles here at Cliffside Command. Uh, and again, we've got just a photo on the wall or a poster, storage in the corners, and then the plants on the ceiling, which I think look really nice. And let's go check out our photo of the cruiser. If I can get any closer. Huh? Nope, most certainly can't. Let's get rid of the UI for that real quick. I think that's really cool. It's basically like playing Where's Waldo, but with the cruiser. Uh, it's kind of easy to spot, but he's down there, kind of right in the middle, a little bit blue and to the right of center. But that again is on the first or second island we encountered with all of the flora. It's beautiful. I love it. And that island was so much fun because you know how it's a floating island. You could grapple onto something underneath and while you're pulling yourself towards that and it's recharging, you could grapple onto something else. I felt like Spider-Man. It was so cool. And I know I've said that before with just the one, but imagine it with two and being able to shoot uh, grappling hooks out of both your hands. It's so freaking fun. And last but not least, at the far end, I'll get rid of that real quick. We had a door that was supposed to be here that didn't get put here. Prawn bay number three. Holy crap, it's laggy down here. Uh, again, identical to our other prawn bays as far as decor and storage is concerned, but we have the bruiser as well as two additional storage units for all of our vortex torpedoes and you guessed it, all of our gas torpedoes. We are fully stocked, ready to go whenever duty calls. Let's go ahead and check out the bruiser. Just for the sake of doing it all in the same video, I know we did this last video as well, but ion power cells. A drill arm uh, for needing to do combat via drill if ever necessary. I can swap it out if I see that would be a need. Uh, again, standard here and dual hull reinforcement to give us a little extra beefiness. And then the grappling arm as well as a torpedo to deal that payload so well. It's so much fun using torpedoes. I don't think it does anything, but it's it's fun. And we've got this poster, which is freaking sweet looking. Um, let me make it look better here real quick. There we go. That's better. That looks freaking awesome. Um, I'll also show you why I don't currently play on high settings in the base. Uh, everything as I'm sprinting around and moving. Just it 
sorry, I'm looking at what the recording's looking like right now. It just slows down to a crawl, and this is actually pretty good. I've had, I've had it perform way worse than this, but right here, it's just, it's just so blurry. It's, it's terrible. All right, and if we head on out, we've got this picture, which I'm incredibly happy with. It took me a while to get because I had to wait for that thing to attack. Um, I actually sent out the bruiser and waited for a crab squid to attack it to get this photo. Um, it almost died in the process, but so worth it because that just looks awesome. Another tiny little detail. Uh, the text on these signs is the same as the color of the vehicle. So we've got the blue for the bruiser, which is like purple and black and blue color of bruises. Also, another minor detail, the bruiser is blue, the cruiser, which is lime green, is as close to green as we can make it, the harvester, which is red, is red, the avenger, which is yellow, is yellow, and sea moth, which is the fabulous fourth, is as close to pink as we can get, and so all five of our vehicles are different colors, and I think that's really cool. I don't know why. Uh, again, the label on our lime green cruiser, is lime green I don't know I had so much fun with this guys so much fun but believe it or not that's the base Let's head on out for one last look holy crap guys that's the base oh and one thing I didn't kind of show off um, these lights down here I think look really cool the floodlights just making this area look just like blinding they don't actually if you look right into one it doesn't like blind you there's no like lens flare that goes on but it really illuminates this area quite a bit like without them uh is that already showing i don't know without them it doesn't look as good you guys can take my word for that um and then i don't think i showed this you can probably see it goodbye frames uh but we have these glass eye compartments going going all the way through so you can just run through all of this real easy it makes it really nice and from the exterior it's quite a nice look i really like how that looks let me see if does deleting this get me supports back on anything ah it does heck yes so despite the light that's what it's supposed to look like that's so much better a little bit busier but they are actually standing now and not floating but if I go this way, frame rate, hello again. Nice to, nice to meet you. But yeah, you can see how our base looks at a distance with this uh, graphical setting. Not super great, so. But yeah, guys, this is Ghostlight Command. And down here, uh, you couldn't see it from the interior, but this is, this is the vault, and it's built up inside this cave system with floodlights, or not floodlights, spotlights all around the front half of it. And the reinforced walls. I don't know. It, it looks like a vault. I think it's really cool. But if I were to do a break-in, I would totally come through this tunnel right here. You could slip in from the side of the base. Go underneath everything. Sneak in undetected. Come up, maybe avoid the detection of the light and drill up through the bottom. Totally role-playing the crap out of this right now. Anyway, guys. That is Cliffside Command. Alright, back on... Back on Max Graphics. This place just looks so good. I love how this came out. This isn't quite what I pictured it being when I originally... Oh my gosh. Remember the first time we built this? Like, the thumbnail from the episode I built. It's like, oh my gosh, we have a base. It's amazing. And it was this dinky little thing. And that has now become this like holy crap guys it's awesome we have come so far and we are almost done with the game next episode will be our last one guys it's weird to say that until the dlc at least i'll definitely be revisiting this game once dlc comes out but that's gonna do it for this episode guys let me know what you think about cliffside command Please, please be nice to me. If you don't like it, please just be, say it nicely. <laughs> I spent so much time on this base. It is unreal. My game can't even play well anymore because of it, but it's so worth it. 
But next time, we are ending the game. We are getting off this planet. And we're also going to do a couple other things that are just kind of like, I don't know, things I wanted to do or I've been told I should do that I want to do. And also because building the rocket's probably going to take like two minutes. So, it's a filler and it's going to be fun. And I'm running out of words because this I'm just speechless right now. This is so cool. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you can tell I had a blast making this and making this uh, video as well. But holy crap, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this. I will see you guys in the next one. And until then, as always, take care. <laughs>